Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, David, I'm glad we have to see the tree surgeon today. We wouldn't have come up here today, would we? We would not. I don't seem to get any work done anymore. It's good Roger's so understanding. Yesterday, Julia and Hartley. Today, the tree surgeon. Everything's so wonderful up here in Eastbrook, David. I couldn't bear it if things started going wrong. <laughs> what is there left to go wrong? So far, everything's gone wrong. <laughs> Honestly, it seems that the more we do, the more there is to do. Are we uncovering things, David? No, not yet. There's been so much that meets the eye, we haven't had time to uncover yet. Sound kind of depressed about it. <laughs> do I? Don't mean to. Actually, I'm in love with this place. I, I love every bit of work I put into You'd it. You'd probably be terribly disappointed if it was all perfect without you, wouldn't you? <laughs> I think you have said something very profound, darling. It's a nice place. The trees are beautiful. And useful, too. Those oaks and, and maple, maples over there along the edge of the meadows. That's so the herd can lie in the shade while, they, while they're tired and, and grazing. And these great maples around the house... The apple orchard over toward the barn. Are four trees an orchard? Are three people a family? You're right. They're an orchard. What other kinds of trees have we? Well, there's those elms over across the meadow by the brook. Hey, there's... don't forget the Christmas trees by the driveway. A uh, hemlock. I think they're my favorite. Well, that's because you can recognize them. Oh. David, how can you tell trees apart? Tell them apart? They look completely different. Christmas trees do. Hemlocks. Hemlocks. Darling, their leaves are different, their, their trunks, their branch formations. They look as different as you or I. I'm so embarrassed I don't even dare look a tree in the trunk. <laughs> I wish that tree surgeon would get here. <laughs> Paradiso said to meet him here at 11 o'clock. It's now 11.20. I'm glad he's late. It's nice standing here talking about our land, especially with winter thawing and spring in the air. What's more, our trees don't need a surgeon. They look wonderfully healthy. Hello there. Oh, Mr. Tucker, hello. What are you doing up here today? Wasn't expecting you till come Saturday. And Paradiso called. Told us he ordered the tree surgeon today, so we came up. Tree surgeon? Mm -hmm. What kind of a newfangled doctor is he? Uh, you and the missus feeling sick? <laughs> no, no, we're fine, Mr. Tucker. A tree surgeon is a doctor for trees. For trees, eh? Uh -huh. Trees ain't feeling well? Since when? Well, they're fine, Mr. Tucker. At least I think so. Then why call the doctor? Doctors is good for when you're getting set to kick the old bucket goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> David says the doctor is just in case the trees aren't feeling well and can't say so. Oh, trees can tell you all right. They just start dropping their leaves and breaking their branches. You, you don't need any doctor to tell you that. No. I know, Mr. Tucker. I don't expect him to tell us anything except the, what kind of spray we should have and when we should have it done. Sprays, you say? Last time I had the sniffles until I called the doctor, he... Wanted to spray my throat with some pink stuff. I wouldn't let him touch it. Throat got better the next day. My cousin Harry got himself sprayed all the time. He just died right away one night. Been sprayed just that morning, too. Nope, I don't believe in sprays. Doctors, any snow. David, what do you think? Well, I... I think Mr. Tucker's being a little pessimistic. Pessimistic? What? No, I'm being honest. I'm just warning you. Look around you. Look over your trees. Where have you seen a nicer bunch standing so tall and straight and strong? Ain't never been one that caused me any trouble. None at all, none at all. None. Oh, every now and then one of them. Nope, nope, they're all fine. <laughs> it never hurts to make sure, Mr. Tucker. Make sure what, eh? These trees are all healthy trees, going fine. Worth the whole price of the place. Uh, counting trees, I... I should have charged you more. Well, they're a handsome lot. I was just telling Claudia oh, that I Oh, then thought... leave well enough alone, son. Leave well enough alone. Trees have been standing a couple million years. You've been standing, well, less than 30. Tree surgeon, he's been in business less than 20. Trees must know best of all of us whether it's well or not. When they ain't it, it'll drop. Drop? But I don't want any of our trees to drop. Well, now, darling, stop worrying. This place hasn't got a bit of disease on it. You can tell by, by just looking at it. Our trees are beautiful and healthy and good. Ah, glad to hear you appreciate it, son. Glad to hear it. 
Why, you can feel it in your bones when a place is reeking with health, and this here farm is reeking. My dad never had a doctor. I never have one when I'm conscious, and our trees uh, would be an insult to, to them. Would, yes, David, would. that's a car pulling in now, isn't it? Yeah, this, this must be the man. Can you see his face? What's he look like? I don't like him. I know it. I know it. <gasps> David, he looks like a salesman. <laughs> Um, hello, Mr., uh, Mr., uh... Thorndike. Oh, hello, Mr. Thorndike. Yes. Uh, I'm Mr. Norton. I do. Mr. Paradiso said that you'd get yes, here Yes, by... uh, well, let's get started. You've got a lot of trees. Um, Tucker, the trees are all fine, young man. We Good. bought this farm from Mr. Tucker, and this is my wife, Mrs. Norton. I do. Thorndike. Well, um, which one's the worst off? Where'd we start? As Mr. Tucker says, I don't think we're going to have very much trouble. But how about taking a look at these elms right over here? Right. You realize, of course, Mr. Norton, that we'll have to spray, have to spray right away before the tree starts to leaf. You see, remember what I was telling you, son? Yeah, we give the dormant spray in spring, and then we spray again when the trees are fully foliated. Foliated? What's that, David? In leaf, darling. Why didn't he say so? You noticed any signs of elm disease? Elms have a particular kind of disease. Is it catching? Highly epidemic. Bacteria sets in, trees start looking bad, defoliation sets in. Very serious, very serious. Sounds like getting bald. I don't think I like a bald tree, David. Well, now, here we are. Hmm. Mm, what, young fella? Don't look so good. Looks uh, bad. Uh, what looks bad? Decay set in. Gone bad pretty deep. Here, now, see here. Uh, that's, uh... That's decay. Yep. Rot it all the way down. Rot it? Mm-hmm. Have to clean her out. Just hope it's not worse than it looks. Decay doesn't always show up on the surface. Oh, David. He sounds just like a dentist. She's, um, she's really bad, huh? See that bad spot right here on this side? Uh-huh. Down here on the other side? Yeah. Uh-huh. Just hope it's not one continuous involved area. Well, what happens after you dig out the decay? You put in an inlay? I uh, fill the cavity with cement, wood pulp, asphalt, or some such substance, depending, of course, on the condition of the cavity. Mm-hmm. Yep. Here's another elm, similar condition. Take it all this way. Well, uh, what do you think caused all of this, Mr. Thorndike? Perhaps their diet hasn't been adequate. Uh, their diet trees have been eating the same thing for 50,000 years, maybe 100,000. Mr. Tucker... You're making a very common mistake. The earth is not yielding as balanced a diet these days as 50,000 years ago. It isn't? No. I thought science had advanced. Mrs. So... Norton, we rob the earth. We rob it every day. Oh, David, did you know that? Well, I, I didn't realize it was so serious. Uh, doctor, I, I mean, Mr. Thorndike, would you please take a look at this oak tree across the drive? Hmm. Tell you from here, that oak's diseased. The oak, too? Notice that bark on the trunk? Notice the scars? All the way deep into the cambium. Mr. Tucker, you never had those scars tended to, did you? Well, uh, I, uh, I ain't never noticed them. The tree was standing fine, been standing fine for a hundred years. If it had fell, I'd have put a new one in. But I ain't uh, wasted no money on spraying or bandaging or coddling these trees. They, they ain't window boxes. They're bigger than me and stronger. <laughs> well, Mr. Norton, I can well imagine the condition of the rest of the trees. You consider yourself fortunate if you have one of these standing in three years. Your elm's diseased, white pine probably blistered, these oaks here are covered with parasites, your apple trees probably not even bearing. Not possible, our beautiful trees. It's deceptive. Remember the chestnut blight? No, I don't remember. Well, you weren't even born, darling. Every chestnut tree on the continent of North America died. Not one survived. Not one has been able to survive since. But that's not possible. I uh, merely remind you of the chestnuts to tell you that those things do happen. You stand in danger of losing every one of your trees, even if you don't do something radical about it, and immediately. Well, I'll get my instruments. They're uh, in the car. That's what you get for neglect, Mr. Tucker. Oh, sure. Oh, David, I feel terrible. Look at our place. A while ago, it looked so beautiful, and now I feel as if I were walking through a hospital ward. Cheer up. 
I feel as if we were walking through a graveyard. <laughs> Imagine pretty soon if things keep up this way, our land will be completely naked. There won't be a tree on it. I am imagining. And to tell you the truth, I, I don't like it. I never realized before that, that anything could look so good on the outside. Just look at these trees, for an example, and be so sick on the inside. Makes you suspicious of everything around you. And you, Mr. Tucker, it's all your fault. You didn't care enough about those trees well, to... Well, I cared enough about them, young woman, to, to keep them going while I could. An apple tree went bad on me, I spiked the roots with a nail. Next season, she bore me fruits, did. In her death pangs? Well, the peach tree looked bad, I twisted her. Twisted her? Next spring, she bloomed good as new. Next fall, she died. Oh, you don't have to be a fancy-fangled kind of a doctor to know that nature cracks herself when she's drove into it. I hurt them trees to, 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 force, to make them force themselves to live and live the dead. I ain't had a tree die on my place, except when it couldn't live no more. That's the truth of it. Then, then you think that maybe... Ah, uh, look here, young woman, you too, son. These trees will be standing here long after you're not here to look at them. Even I... Maybe you're not going to be here, maybe. You, you heard that there highfalutin uh, boreal medico talking? He says uh, nature has a way to find your balance. He, he said that one true word. No, that's a consolation. Especially since we've so beautifully disturbed nature's balance. Well, what I'm trying to say is, took nature 50,000 years to get where she is. Give her another 50,000 and she'll be right back where she started from, all nice and balanced out. And then our trees will probably be as beautiful and healthy and strong as they look, David. Yes, darling. They'll last with uh, time. David, I feel better already. This is a beautiful place. And the trees need us, darling. We love them all the more for it. Yep. 50,000 years and everything will be fine as around Red Apple again. Now... Ain't that a cheerful thought to think about? <laughs> yes, very cheerful. Very funny. Does your family gather around to see what you've brought home from the market? They're probably looking for that familiar carton of Coca-Cola. And if you've brought home a whole case in the car, oh, lady, is that a red-letter day. The phone buzzes with party invitations when there's plenty of coke on ice, and the whole family falls into a gala mood. Isn't it nice that you can rouse such festive feelings for so little money? Coke is just five cents a bottle, you know. Oh, Mr. Tucker, before you go... Uh, yes, Sean? Well, just thought I'd like to ask how you like your new neighbors, the Nortons. Oh, uh, nice young people. Uh, I was kind of hoping they'd be up here this Saturday, but uh, they got to visit some fancy friends on Long Island. Long Island, huh? Eh? Yep. Hmm. Sounds like tomorrow David and Claudio will be packing uh, to go visit Reggie Finch. Uh, Finch? Well, thanks for the news, Mr. Tucker. So long. Well, uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you when the thaw's off the ground. So long, boy. So long, Mr. Tucker. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause, the pause that refreshes. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.